You're listening to Long Distance. I'm Paula Mardo. Hey. Hi. Hi. Hi, Paula and Patrick. Hi, Paula and Patrick. Um, 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 hi, uh, my name is... Hi, I'm... Hey, my name is... This is... My name is... Um, Paula, from Virginia Beach, Virginia. And I grew up here in the Inland Empire. And I moved out of the Philippines in 2013 to Dubai, and I'm now living in North Texas. I was born in Manila. I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. I live on the Sunshine Coast in Australia, but I was born in Hong Kong, and then moved to Malta when I was five, and then moved to England when I was eight. I live in Portland, Oregon. And I'm from Beckley, West Virginia. Actually, I live in Charleston, West Virginia now. Anyway, besides the point, I definitely Filipino. Okay, so a while back, we asked you, yes, you, to give us a call and to tell us about your long distance story or what it's like to be Filipino wherever you are in the world. Many of you called, thank you very much. And now we'd like to share some of those calls with you on this episode. This was a really fun episode to put together. Honestly, it was inspired by a lot of your messages and requests from last season. Many of you had asked us to, you know, come to your part of the world and tell stories about Filipinos there. Well, because we can't be everywhere at once, yet, we figured this would be a great way to get your stories on the show and to finally hear from you, our listeners, who have made this show possible. And this episode would not be possible, well, all episodes really, but this particular one truly would not be possible without my fellow producer, voice actor, partner, whatever, Patrick Apino, who made it all happen. Hey, Patrick. What's up? So, Patrick, usually I take the lead on show production and you come in for story editing and things like that. But for this episode, you took charge of collecting all the voicemail messages we received, you sorted through them, then you edited a bunch of them into a really great piece— I threw in some music and all that jazz, but you really took the reins of putting this all together. What was that like? It was cool. It was fun. I kind of just liked hearing people's stories. And a lot of the stories were kind of always from the perspective of being the other, you know? So I found that kind of interesting. There were so many great calls. We really appreciated that people took the time to call, leave a message in three minutes or less. Some maybe took a couple of calls to get their messages in, but that was cool. There were calls with different kinds of stories. A lot of them had to do with what it was like to grow up in their part of the world, what it was like to be in a community that was very Filipino or not Filipino at all. That said, we could not fit all of the calls into one episode. And we also had to edit a lot of these calls down for time. Patrick actually really got to listen to all of these messages pretty closely Where were these calls coming from? Could you name some places? Yeah, there were a bunch from the U.S., one from Australia, and one from a a woman who lived in Dubai, Canada, places like uh, Va Beach, um, (laughs) Stockton, Queens, the Bay, Chicago, and, and Boston. Well, I'm really excited to share this episode. It's going to be a change of pace from our usual story episodes, but I think it'll be fun. Thanks, Patrick, for making it all happen. No problem. Now, without further ado, all that is on this episode, Long Distance Calls, Volume 1. Oh, a quick warning. There are some curse words in this episode. Not too much. Just in the first and last call. Okay? Here we go. Hi, uh, my name is Frank Mata. And I grew up here in the Inland Empire, which is like the halfway mark between, uh, I don't know, Los Angeles and San Diego. So one time I was on, I was actually reading at a bar. And I think the bar back, he was Filipino. He was from the Philippines. And he made that clear is after his shift, he asked if I spoke Tagalog. I don't speak Tagalog. And I explained this to him. And he just sort of said that I wasn't like qualified to be Filipino. It's such a weird statement. I saw that he was getting heated about it, and I was like, look, man, I guess that's your definition of Filipino. I'm just as Filipino, but uh, I'm going to get out of here. And as I said that to him and said bye, he basically told me to fuck off. And I said, whoa, (laughs) that's not necessary. And he just 
felt really compelled to to let me know how Filipino he was. And so he followed me outside and um, he shouldn't have done that. Hey, my name is Michaela Cumbers. I live on the Sunshine Coast in Australia, but I was born in Hong Kong and then moved to Malta when I was five and then moved to England when I was eight. And that's where I spent most of my time growing up. My mom is a Filipina and my dad is English. And growing up, I've always been proud of my Filipino heritage, but at times struggled to find the balance between cultures. And I never do know what to answer when people ask, where are you from? No, really, where are you from? I work in video production and I live with my girlfriend of five years. I'd love to take her to the Philippines one day, but until then, attempting to recreate the Filipino dishes my mom used to make, we'll have to do. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the podcast. I love it. Keep it up. Bye. My name is Lorenzo Karenunian, and I'm from Beckley, West Virginia. Actually, I live in Charleston, West Virginia now. Anyway, besides the point, uh, i definitely Filipino. And growing up here, of all places, is really odd. As it's a really conservative place, not really racially diverse. And I don't know, man. I, I didn't really have a good idea of who I was for the longest time and and my exposure to Filipino culture was really just limited to my church which was I don't know maybe a few dozen people most of me growing up meant I don't know figuring out on my own so every time I'm around family that's actually from the Philippines or from a Filipino community I'm some kind of a weirdo My name is Portia Tolentino, and I live in Portland, Oregon, and I've been living here for the past 20 years. I was born in the Philippines, but my family moved to the States when I was two years old, and I've lived in Maryland, Kentucky, North Carolina before they finally settled in Oregon. I grew up with a a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds, and yeah, I feel like I was lucky to grow up in a really supportive family and to have found my passion early, and that's art. Art helped me navigate as a person. Right now I work in Portland and I work doing what I love and that is making props and set pieces for a stop motion animation company and I really love what I do and I actually work with a lot of other Filipino artists which is so inspiring and I see them doing their thing and it inspires me to keep moving. My name is Sarah Bundibleton Barnes. I'm originally from Northern California. I grew up only knowing my mom and my Lula being the only people I knew who were Filipino. I didn't really like being Filipino. I didn't know what it meant. And it was hard. I grew up in a mostly white place. And I only understood being Filipino largely as like a marker of difference. And in 2015, I was on a two-week trip with my mother to our ancestral province, which is the province of Antique on the island of Panay in the Visayas. And I had never really spent a lot of time in the country. On the last day, the mayor asked me to be at a regional beauty pageant. I didn't even think it was possible. And so my mom and I went back to Manila, and then we were going to fly out to the U.S., but we had different flights. And my mom said, you're not going to do that beauty pageant, right? And I said, no. And then she got on her flight, and then I walked away from my flight, and I moved to the Philippines with a duffel bag with two weeks of clothes and I won the beauty pageant and after I won the beauty pageant the governor appointed me head of tourism and I was like 22 so then I lived there for the next year over a year maybe and it changed my life and it changed my work so yeah that's my long distance story.
You're listening to Long Distance Calls, Volume 1. These are thoughts, stories, anecdotes, and experiences about being Filipino anywhere in the world, delivered through voicemail messages from you, our long distance listeners. Now, I want to take a short break from these calls to share a podcast that I think some of you might dig. As you might know from previous episodes, I lived in the Bay in high school. 925, what's up? So I have a podcast to suggest for all you Bay Area listeners or simply folks who like to listen and learn more about the news. The Bay is a podcast from KQED about local Bay Area news, but it's also something much deeper than that. It digs into some of the biggest news of the region, the stories that exist in the margins, current events and issues that affect one of the largest, most active Filipino communities in America. Who owns Silicon Valley? What makes BART a politicized space? Do Asians go to jail too? The Bay is storytelling, but storytelling the news. And it's hosted by Devin Katayama and Erica Cruz Guevara, who is, by the way, a dope Filipino journalist. And if you don't already follow her work, you really should. Subscribe to The Bay to get stories delivered to your feed on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Listen to The Bay on your fave podcast app, like the thing you're likely using right now to listen to Long Distance. I'll leave more information and links to episodes from The Bay Podcast in the show description. So just tap or swipe on the podcast art in your app or check it out on our website, longdistanceradio.com. Now, back to more calls. Hi, my name is Genevieve Mina. I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. I'm the only one in my family born here in America. The rest of my family emigrated from the Philippines in the late 80s and early 90s. So in Alaska, there's a thing called Alaskero, which are Filipino seasonal workers who work between California grape farms in the summer and fish processing plants in Alaska in the wintertime. So that's what my dad did. Growing up here in Anchorage, there were a lot of Filipino people that I, I saw. And so it was like normal for me, but I was never really involved in like the Filipino community. I didn't really speak the language, so I never really felt Filipino. And I never really wanted to be proud of being Filipino, because I think the only conception of being Filipino was like Pinoy pride and all of that. But now, you know, I'm in my early 20s. I'm working in a nonprofit healthcare policy and I'm really trying to reclaim a lot of that identity that I didn't really take pride in growing up because I only learned over the past couple of years that Filipinos are the biggest immigrant group in Alaska and we are like nowhere. We're not really in positions of power. We're not really represented in our local like officials and all of that. And so I'm really trying to reclaim my Filipino identity because our ability to access politics is important. Hi, my name is Mark Tayadyab. I was born and raised in San Jose, California, where I was largely surrounded by Filipinos. And I went to undergrad at UC Davis, where I majored in Asian American Studies. A few years later, after I graduated, I decided to move to North Carolina, to apply for their veterinary school, where I'm one of the few handful of Filipinos. It's been quite a culture shock. For example, in order to get into veterinary school, you have to gain a certain amount of hands-on hours in the field. And I decided to go out of my comfort zone and go work with a large animal veterinarian. And we go out in these very rural places. And as soon as I step out of the truck, many of the clients, they look at me and they automatically make assumptions. They see me and ask, wow, what was it like to live in Hawaii? Or what's Alaska like? And it gets into an awkward moment where I tell them, I'm from California. And also it gets more complicated as I'm treating their animal that I've explained what a Filipino is. Hi, my name is Amy St. George and I'm from Virginia Beach, Virginia. And you're speaking with Little Miss Philippines of Virginia, 2000 to 2001. Um, I grew up in a pretty tight-knit 
big Filipino community here in Virginia Beach, going to Filipino parties every weekend with lots of food, playing Nintendo upstairs while all of our moms and aunties played bingo downstairs. I grew up doing Filipino folk dance for the yearly fiestas here, Viva San Clemente, and doing the pageants around here as well. My sisters and I all competed in the pageants here, although I'm the only one that really won. <laughs> um, after I graduated, I got recruited into a religious order through my church, and so I basically became a postulant, which is essentially what Maria is in Sound of Music, so kind of a nun in training. A lot of the other people who were recruited into this were also Filipino kids like me. And we basically ended up leaving and having to seek treatment and therapy for essentially a really traumatic experience. So after leaving there and basically seeking treatment for brainwashing into a cult, it's kind of been a long road of healing and self-discovery for me. Because as a non-binary, queer, Philippinex American, I tend to have to live my life in a really fragmented way. I kind of feel like I have my queer and trans friends, and then I have my Filipino friends, and then I have my family, and it feels like nobody really gets to know all of me. Hi, I'm Angela Gombi. I'm from Maryland, just outside of D.C., and it's fun and easy to be Filipino here because there are a lot of resources and opportunities to see yourself represented. I'm also biracial. My mother is Filipina, my father is white, and my identity has always been sort of a complicated issue for me. My mom came here in the 60s and wanted nothing to do with being Filipino, so I was always told to check white on my form, but I don't look white or present white. I wasn't treated like I'm white, but I was treated differently in the Filipino community because of colorism. So it was really complicated for me for a really long time. And it wasn't until I got to college that I met Filipinos outside of my family. And I'd say those relationships and experiences really supported me through finding my identity that I'm, I'm proud of today. I have a daughter now who is a quarter Filipina, half Ashkenazi Jew, and a quarter broadly European. And she presents as white. So I struggle with how she and I will connect culturally and how we'll experience the world very differently. Some people don't think I'm her mom. I get a lot of weird looks, but that's common for a lot of families that I know. And I think as Filipinos, we're accustomed to this sort of diversity because of our history and our migrations all over the world. But thanks to long distance radio and other outlets, it's great to be able to share these experiences, no matter how complex they are. Hey, my name is David Manessis. I'm a Filipino American. I grew up in Chicago area and I lived in LA as well. And I also lived in Spain. I guess my family's a little unique because most of my friends have a Filipino mom and a white dad if they're mixed. But uh, I'm the opposite. My dad is the Filipino one. And my mom is a blonde haired, blue eyed lady from the South. It was interesting growing up because my mom was very American, just kind of classic American woman, and my dad was very much an immigrant. And we lived with my grandma and my aunt for a long time, which is pretty typical in Filipino families. Um, but I still never learned Tagalog or Kapampangan, and I'm not a great Filipino in that sense. But yeah, that's uh, me being Filipino in America. My name is Lauren Lola, and I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm third generation Filipino American. My grandfather on my dad's side was from Bicol. I'm also mixed race. I am, along with being Filipino, I'm German, Portuguese, and Irish. Growing up in the San Francisco Bay Area, I was surrounded by a very diverse community, but growing up in the suburbs, I was also surrounded by a pretty good place white community. And I was brought up in a very white household as well. My Filipino heritage didn't really have too much of a, of a role in my upbringing. I kind of make up for lost time by learning more about my heritage, both in high school and even more so as an adult in college and beyond. And I have a feeling it's going to be something that will be a big part of my life going forward. Uh, not just being Filipino, but also understanding what it is to be a mixed race Filipino American. This is Justin Javier. I went to UC Santa Barbara. At the end of high school, um, I was a basketball player and 
when I went to Europe, I witnessed a lot of people either playing soccer or they were riding bicycles or they're competing in triathlons. So I thought, hey, why don't I do that? So as soon as I got back to the United States, I bought a bicycle um, and I started training to compete in a triathlon. Fast forward a couple years later, I'm now you know competing in cycling races and triathlon races from uh, the United States all the way to as far as Italy. But along the way, I'm also trying to find like my identity of who I am as a as a man, as a Filipino man. And I remember having a conversation. Someone was telling me. You know, if you don't know many Filipinos out there, especially you ones who are, you know, in sports or someone that you can look up to, why don't you just do a Google search? Make that long story short, I couldn't find anyone. Basically, I've been through a lot and I've witnessed a lot as a dark Filipino kid cycling in a pretty much predominantly white race, as in like competition race, where there were no Filipinos, barely any minorities especially out in Europe, I did face and hear a lot of uh, discriminatory words towards myself, but didn't let that deter me from racing. It actually empowered me a little bit more, but I have a lot of stories. Hi, my name is Lorenzo Hill, I'm from Madrid. Originally, I'm from Veracatandawanes, the Philippines. Uh, that's uh, in southeastern Luzon, in the Bicol region. I was born in Manila back in 01. Shortly after we moved my family, I moved to Verac. And I lived in the Philippines until around 06, 07, something like that. Then we left the Philippines and came to New York. Um, we lived out in Queens, New York, the borough of Maspeth. Living in New York was a tougher time. We were used to get bullied a lot by the neighborhood kids. Call me a chink, Chino, a monkey, and then I piss them off, and they get mad and they punch me and shit. But you know, we didn't have much money back then, but we got through. After living in New York, we moved to Wisconsin, out in uh, Triple Falls, Wisconsin, tiny little town. I was like one of the five Asians in the whole school. Living there in that very white environment, you know, not just in the white in the snow, but white in the people, it started to become apparent to me that I'm different, obviously, from the others. After that. Uh, my family and I moved out to Stockton, California. That's where I currently reside now. And um, that's where I was really able to, um, you know, rediscover what it was like to be Filipino, what it means to be Filipino. I, I met other Filipinos after, you know, a very long time of isolation from my culture. I even retrained myself to speak Tagalog once more. I'm able to find pride in who I am. And what it means to be Filipino is not really about do you know this and that about the culture or how it doesn't even mean you have to know the language. But what it is, is that at the end of the day, when times are tough for your people, do you stand by them and do you stand with them? Do you support them and do you love them? That's what it means to be Philip, you know. This episode was edited by Patrick Epino. Sound design and mix is by me, Alamardo. Long Distance is produced by Patrick Epino and me. By the way, I know it's the holidays and you might have a little more free time or even travel time coming up. So be sure to catch up on all episodes of Long Distance on your fave podcast app or on our show site, longdistanceradio.com. Please tell your friends and fam to check it out too. And while you're at it, leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. On the show site, we've got photos and links to materials on every episode page. Plus, you can watch new episodes to Long Distance TV, the documentary video series for this podcast, directed by Patrick Apino. Sup? Yeah, he worked really hard on those videos, and they're beautiful, if I do say so myself. So please do check it out. This season of Long Distance is produced with support from PRX and the Google Podcast Creator Program. Music in this episode is by Blue Dot Sessions. Theme song is by Sea Light and the Prisms. Special thanks to Jagmeet Sangmak, 
over at PRX for giving us feedback on this episode. And seriously, thank you so much to everybody who called in. We want to make more episodes like this in the future, so if you'd like to share your long-distance story, call 213-293-6024 and leave us a message about what it's like to be Filipino wherever you are in the world. We may not be able to fit every story or call on the episode, but we do love hearing from you. And who knows, you might put it on the next one. So remember, with your story, please leave your full name, if possible, where you're from, and how we can email you or call you back, just in case you want to follow up. That's it for this episode of Long Distance. See you in two weeks. Thanks for listening. Baby.